I want to share how I repair the blown out stitching on my pontoon boat seats. The way that I do it uses the existing thread holes and has a very clean looking result. Being able to repair a blown out seam like this is great for getting some extra life out of your seats and also ensures that you protect the foam underneath that would otherwise get eaten away by the sun if left exposed. Nothing will ever be as good as the original stitching, but you can do a pretty great looking repair if you have the right tools and technique. This repair took me about an hour to complete. You can see how my stitching has been destroyed by the sun. When these seats are made, two pieces of vinyl are stacked on top of each other and sewn together. This creates the hidden seam that you see in the middle, then the small flaps of vinyl on either side of the hidden seam are folded over and sewn to the same piece of vinyl. This creates the two outer seams. They also incorporate a piece of fabric that connects the two outer seams for extra support. This extra piece of fabric has to be omitted from this fix because the only way to sew it behind the seam work that we're going to do is to take the seat material off the seats. Let's take a look at the tools I'll be using for this repair. Note that I'll include links to everything in the description below. This is called a speedy stitcher. It essentially lets you sew in the same way that a sewing machine does, but in this case you're doing it by hand. We will check that out more later. This is a seam ripper that you can use to cut old threads with precision. It has a pointy end to get under the thread and a cutting blade at the bottom that lets you slice through the thread. One of the sewing kits that I bought came with these handy cutters that are great for snipping thread. I have some heavy outdoor rated thread that matches the color of the thread on my boat. I think I would prefer something a little thicker, but this is what I have on hand, so it will have to do. I also have this cool needle kit that has this really useful curved needle called a mattress needle. This is what we'll use to sew the middle seam. Let's prep the seam to be restitched. I'm going to use my seam ripper to open this up until I get to the threads that are not deteriorated. Because the thread is so destroyed, I don't really need to use the cutter part of the seam ripper. I'm actually using it backwards without the cutter, so I can just use the pointy end to lift up the thread and figure out where the strong threads are. Okay, I've got the seam opened up. Let's get the speedy stitcher ready to start sewing the outer threads. The bottom of the stitcher houses a bobbin that holds your thread. The thread feeds from the bobbin through the body of the stitcher. I just re-spooled the bobbin because I didn't have very much thread left on there. Let me show you how to rig this up. I'm going to pass the thread through this little hole in the body of the stitcher. Then I'm going to put the bobbin and cap assembly into the bottom of the stitcher body, taking care to make sure that the little nub on the bobbin stays seated in the center of the metal cap. Now I'll unscrew the chuck. There's storage for two needles in here. I'll pull these out for now so I don't poke myself. You want to take the thread and feed it up through this metal collar. Then put the needle that you're going to use into the chuck. I'm going to be using the curved tip needle for this job. Now run your thread through the needle. I actually did it backwards here. I think it works better if you feed the thread from the back side of the needle rather than the front side that you see here. I ended up correcting this off camera later. Now you can put the tip of the chuck back on and screw it down so it holds the needle in place. This little metal nub in the center of the stitcher body is used to anchor the thread temporarily as you are stitching. Now you want to pull out the length of thread that you think you'll need for what you are sewing. I usually pull out a little more than I think I need. Before I start stitching, I'm going to tuck away this piece of good center thread that I'll tie off to later. I'm going to start off by going on top of some of the existing stitching that's still good. You want to insert the needle from the outside and pull the thread into the inside of the seam. You only do this maneuver once for the duration of this stitch. This long piece of thread that is now on the back side of the fabric will be manually run through the back of each stitch as you poke the needle through each hole in the fabric. Now you can pull the needle out and move up to the next hole in the stitch. Push the needle into the hole and pull back a tiny bit to get the thread to loosen up around the needle tip. Then pull the thread away from the needle a bit, but don't pull it all the way out. We just want to make a loop that we can pass the other end of our thread through. Now when you get to the end of the seam, you can cut the thread from the stitcher and tie it to the inner thread that we've been using to pass through the back of each stitch. Now let's repeat the process on the left side. You can see what the stitching looks like on the back side. You have each stitch coming through and that inner thread runs through the back of it. Okay, we have both of our outer stitches done. All that's left to do is to stitch the center back together. I'm going to take a length of new thread and tie one end to the existing good center thread that we tucked away before. I'm going to run the other end of the thread through my curved needle. Now I want to push the needle through two holes on one side of the seam. Basically run the needle into one hole and out another hole right above it. Now I can move to the other side of the seam and do the same thing. 
Every time I switch to another side of the seam, I'm going to start the needle in the last hole that I came out of on that side. The only time you should be putting the needle into a hole that doesn't already have a thread in it is for the first stitch. This is kind of confusing to explain, hopefully the video makes it clear. When you get to the end, I try to run the needle through the same spot a few times and tie a few knots. Then I cut the thread and use the back of the needle to push the leftovers into the seam. Alright, well here's the finished repair. I'm not an expert, but I think this came out pretty well. If you have any tips for me, please let me know in the comments. If you found this video useful, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.